Hi everyone, my name is Shraga and I'm a tour guide in Israel and today I want to tell you a very special story about a Jewish pirate who lived 500 years ago and buried here in the old city of Tzfat. You won't believe to this amazing story. Here we start. First of all, let's start from the end of the story. I want you to look on that gravestone. Do you see the sign of the pirate over there at the top with the skull and the bones there? Can you read in Hebrew underneath it what's written? It's written there that that guy which buried underneath that gravestone is a Tzadik Yesod Olam. He's one of the oldest persons on earth. He was a very big Tzadik, a very big holy person. So the guy which buried there was a very big Tzadik, a holy person and a pirate. Does it goes together? So our story begins around the year 1492 in Spain. Around that time, Fernando and Isabella, the king and the queen of Spain, decided they don't like the Jewish people. And they gave them three options. Or that you kill you all, or that you convert to Christianity, or that you go away and leave Spain. Most of the Jewish people left Spain and went all over the world. But some families didn't have the option to leave Spain. They had to stay there and they converted to Christianity. Some of them didn't really convert, just make a show outside they are Christians, but inside they kept the Jewish life. One of that families were the Korial family. The Korial family had a baby, Mazel Tov. And they called him Yaakov, Yaakov de Korial. But his Spanish name was Diego Perez de Acusta. They didn't tell their kids that they are Jewish. And their kids grown up and they were sure they were Christians. Diego Perez de Acusta grown up there in Spain and when he became 18 years old he joined the Navy and he became a very important commander there in the Navy. Some other commanders in the Navy got jealous at him and they decided to lie and tell the authorities that he went back to his Jewish world and he became religious, Jewish religious, and left the Christian world. On that time, if someone made something like that, he had only one option, to die. And the Inquisition on that time didn't really have mercy on people. They killed them in a very awful way. And they didn't even really check if that's true or not. If someone, Jewish guy, went back to the Jewish world, they just killed him in very, very awful ways. The amazing thing is that the head of the Inquisition at that time, the guy which stand at the head of the Inquisition, was Diego's brother, Francisco de Vitoria. And both of them didn't even know that they came from Jewish family. They didn't know about it. After a while, Francisco even became the Archbishop, the first Archbishop of Mexico. And then something very unexpected happened. Diego was taken to the gallows for execution. And then just a few minutes before he was hanged, Diego's soldiers from the Navy just decided to save him and they went on the stage and rescued him and they ran away from Spain. All of his soldiers with their commander, Diego, ran away from Spain and ended in Jamaica. The reason they went to Jamaica in the Caribbean is because Columbus that discovered America lived there on that time. And the reason he lived there, it's because that after he discovered America, he went back to Spain. And the king and the queen of Spain decided to give him a present. And the present they gave him, it's Jamaica. Columbus was actually the owner of Jamaica. And Columbus came from a Jewish family. He wasn't Jewish, he was Christian. But because he came from the Jewish family, he didn't let the Inquisition to come in there to Jamaica. And that's why many, many Jewish families which ran away from Spain ended in Jamaica and were able to go back to their Jewish history and their Jewish tradition and become religious Jews again. Diego Perez de Acusta, which has just discovered that he is Jewish, decided to check it out and learn a little bit more about Jewish life and Jewish history and ended as a religious guy and even a rabbi and returned back to his Jewish name Yaakov de Korial, Rabbi Yaakov de Korial, Jacob de Korial and he opened up their a community of many many people just like him which were Christian forced to be Christian in Spain and ran away and then in Jamaica and returned back to his Jewish roots. 
and they have decided to open up an army, a Jewish army, a pirate army, which fights only against the Spanish revenge for what they have done to them. On that time, the Spanish Navy was very busy. They went to America to steal all the treasures they can find over there and even take the Native Americans as slaves and bring them back to Spain. And Yaakov de Corial and his soldiers decided to attack that boats and to release all that slaves, all that Native Americans and take all the money they found over there, steal it from the Spanish Navy, bring it back to Jamaica and they even had an agreement with Christopher Columbus. F of what they found goes to them and F go to Christopher. They had such a big success that their navy became the biggest pirate army in the whole world on that time. And the community became so big and so rich that some of the people from that community decided to go out from Jamaica and open up another Jewish pirate religious community in Netherlands. They went there, speak with the authorities, and had the same agreement. They are the Jewish pirates, attack the Spanish Navy, steal what they found in their boats, and split it, half for the Netherlands authorities and half for the Jewish community. The rumors about this big success of the Jewish pirates army spread all over the world and even got to Morocco. In Morocco, there was a rabbi there, which his name was Rabbi Shmuel Don Falaji. And he went to the authorities over there and told them, let me do the same thing. Give me a small Jewish army with one boat and I will go to the sea, find Spanish boats, attack them. Half of what I found over there goes to me, half of it goes to you and they agreed. And he opened up a new unit of the Jewish pirates army in Morocco. And after that, more and more Jewish people, which was expelled from Spain, joined the Jewish pirate army. So the Jewish army just got bigger and bigger every day. They had a base in Jamaica, they had a base in Amsterdam in Netherlands, and a base in Morocco. And then more commanders from the Spanish army joined the Jewish army and open up a new boat, new units. One of them was Rabbi Moshe Enrix, another one was Rabbi Yaakov Mashiach, another one was uh, Don David Barbanel. We're speaking about thousands of Jewish religious people in that army because that army lasted more than a hundred years of history. Their pirates' boats had the Jewish names. For example, Jerusalem, Yerushalayim, another boat called Esther the Queen, Esther Malka, and Samuel the prophet, Shmuel Navi, and Magen Avraham, and names like that. In the documents which stayed from the navy, the Spanish navy from that time, they described that Jewish army as a very cruel people, very strong people which have uh, like Jewish elements on them, like a yarmulke and the tzitzit, Jewish clothes. Even today, if you want, you can go and visit in Jamaica and in Amsterdam in the Jewish cemetery and you can find there a gravestones with the symbols of the pirates, with the skull and the bones there and Hebrew letters and even they call themselves as rabbis and big tzaddikim which buried there. You can see there on the gravestones symbols, the pirate symbols and the Jewish symbols like the Magen David, the David Star. And of course, Hebrew letters which written their names, which describe them as rabbis and tzaddikim. When Rabbi Yaakov de Corial gets old, he decided to quit, retired, and to fulfill the Jewish dream, come to Israel. And that's why he came here to the city of Tzfat in the north of Israel. He had relatives here. The Rabbi Israel de Corial, which was a very famous, important rabbi in Tzfat on that time. And this rabbi, which was his cousin, Rabbi Israel de Corial, had a grandson, very famous rabbi, which his name is Rabbi Israel Najara, which wrote many of our songs, which we sing on Shabbos every week all over the world. And he was the chief rabbi of the Jewish community in Gaza. When he got to Tzfat, the first thing he had done is to go to one of the biggest Kabbalists the Jewish world ever had, which lived on that time in Tzfat. His name was the Arizal. That's the nickname. That's the way everybody called him. But his full name is Rabbi Isaac Luria Ashkenazi. And he came to him and told him, Rabbi, I'm an old pirate. All my life I spent in fighting. I killed 
thousands of people. Can I go to heaven with all of that things which I have done? How can I pure my soul? I didn't did it just to uh, kill people. I did it to have a revenge in the name of the Jewish people, in the name of the Jewish history, against those who made us convert to Christianity. That's why I had this fight. That's why I opened up this army. How can I pure my soul? And the Arizal told him, well, you know, you are in Tzfat now. That's the city of Kabbalah. We have a very big tzaddik, which buried right next to Tzfat. His name is Rashbi, Rabbi Shimon Ba Yochai. He wrote 2000 years ago a very, very important Kabbalah book, which called the Zohar. This book has the ability to pure the whole world. The Arizal told him, if every day you will read one page from the Zohar, even without understanding what's written there, just read it, that will have the ability to pure your soul, pure the air, pure your house, and pure the whole world. Rabbi Yaakov de Koryal decided to do it. At the end of his life, every day, he used to sit all day long in one of the old shuls in Tzfat, one of the old synagogues, and read the Zohar all day long. And when he passed away, he got buried next to his rabbi, next to the Arizal, and they wrote on his matzeva, on his gravestone, here buried the holy pirate, Rabbi Yaakov de Coriel. From that story, many Kabbalists have learned that if you want to pure your house, pure the air, all you need to do is just to read the Zohar, even without understanding what you read. And that's why you got the Zohar that we read before the circumcision, the bris milah. And you got the Zohar that we read on Hanukkah Abayit when you go into a new house. And that's the opportunity to tell you guys, thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. And if you really want to help this channel and to help me tell the world the Jewish history of Israel, you can help this channel grow up. First of all, you can share that movie with your friends. And down here you got buttons of the super tanks. You can give there like one dollar or two dollars and every dollar you give there. So YouTube understand that this is something which people really like and even wanting to pay money for it. And that's why they let other people, like every one dollar you give there, thousand more people will watch that movie. And if you really want to help me out to make these beautiful special stories, this movie is about the Jewish history and special places here in Israel. So you got this link which open up up here and that link will lead you to my Patreon. In the Patreon you can decide if you want to help us out with $1, $2, $50, $1,000 every month. And with that I will know how much budget I have to make another special movies like that. Thank you very much for watching and see you at the next movie. Bye bye.